tonight, game one of the Hungry Jacks NBL Grand Final Series, with the Wildcats at home to the Bullets. Perth are striving for their first NBL title. Brisbane have won the flag twice, in 1985 and in 87, when they beat the Wildcats. Tonight, those past encounters are forgotten, as the teams match up for the first game in this best of three series. Yes indeed, welcome to the Perth Entertainment Centre for this, the first game of the 1990 Hungry Jacks National Basketball League Grand Final Series. This series, a best of three game challenge between the Perth Wildcats and the Brisbane Bullets, and this is the second time in the 12 year history of the NBL that these two sides have met in a grand final situation. The last time was in 1987, the Bullets won the series 2-zip, they won here in Perth, 80-79, to that was then when it was played at the Perth Superdrome, and they wrapped the series up at Boondle in Brisbane, 106-87. to Sibley. Pushing Torrance's shot away. Long throw down to Sibley. Back to Sengstock. Big reject for Pinder. Both teams still in zone defense. Time for one last shot with the steal by Morsu. Here's David Ingham on the break. Here's Pinder going for the slam dunk. No, just oh, the layup. Oh, he's missed it. Oh, dear, oh, dear. What a costly error that could prove for Tiny Pinder. There's a couple of seconds to go. Well, some very happy faces at Boondle that night. Among them was Peter Mears from Channel 7 in Brisbane. He's with us again now. Deja vu, Pete? How sweet it was, yes. Great memories of that. Thank God for the power surge in the first game here in Perth. But Indeed. I think the Brisbane Bullets did the job in the second uh, game and deserved to take their second NBL title. But the big ask, I think, for the Bullets is the fact that there are only two survivors, Loggins and Sibley, from that team, and how the youngsters will come up in the pressure tonight. And perhaps the most important survivor of that uh, era is Brian Curl. Yeah, well, Curley is going for his seventh grand final, his fifth title. He's the winningest coach in the, the NBL, and Indeed. he's survived. Indeed. Well, these two teams have survived a fairly rugged elimination and semi-final series, or set of series. It's a complicated formula the NBL has, and one which Neil Poe will explain to us now. At the end of the regular season, six of the NBL's 14 teams get a shot at the title. The top two are best placed. They go straight into the semi-finals. The others must contest the sudden death elimination series. Fourth meet fifth, third take on sixth. The highest placed in each series are rewarded with two of the three games at home. That pitted the Melbourne Tigers against the Perth Wildcats and the Brisbane Bullets against the Sydney Kings. The Wildcats campaign started with an easy 22-point win at home over the Tigers, despite a huge individual effort from Dave Colbert with 52 points. Game two at the Glasshouse saw a revitalised Melbourne take it up to Perth, but again, without the injured Andrew Gaze, they were outgunned when it counted. The final score, 123 to 113. That earned the Wildcats a semi-final clash with minor premiers and defending champions, North Melbourne. Game one in Perth was dominated by Ricky Grace and Mike Ellis, who set up a 10-point victory for the Cats, 121 to 110. Game two at the Glasshouse last Friday saw a complete form reversal. The Giants outplayed and outmuscled the Wildcats by 21 points. The third and deciding game last Sunday was a classic chin-to-chin -chin confrontation. After the Giants had held a slender lead for most of the day, Captain Mike Ellis sent the game into overtime. 15 seconds, Ellis to the basket, he scores, he's got a tie ball game. In bad foul trouble and without Ricky Grace, Perth hung on with fierce determination to win a thriller by two points, 112 to 110. Here it is, two seconds, David Graham forces one, that'll be it, Perth will go to the grand final. Brisbane's journey was no less exciting. After just scraping into the playoffs, the Sydney Kings shocked the Bullets, winning game one of their elimination series by 11 points. The return to Boondle also signalled a return to form for Derek Rucker. He led the Bullets to a 28-point whitewash to level the series. In the decider, Brisbane looked to be doing it easily until a withering last gasp charge by the Kings reduced the margin to three. 
The Bullets holding on 107 to 104. Brisbane kept their winning momentum going in game one of the semi-final series against Eastside Melbourne, defeating the Spectres by 10. Game two at the Glasshouse last Saturday had everything as Eastside battled to stay in the series. It too went into overtime. The Spectres had their chances to level the series, but at the final buzzer it was the Bullets by the narrowest of margins, 120 to 119. And so that's how the two teams got here to the grand final series. What they do now is in their own hands. John Gardner, but a crucial game, the first one. Oh, absolutely vital, Dave. But this is the game that got away in 87. The Wildcats need to win this. This is a very pivotal game for the Wildcats. Well, indeed, whoever wins here has a definite advantage going to Burndall. It's very hard to win two games against Brisbane in Brisbane. Yes, and Brisbane have proved that all year. They've been tough there. The Wildcats need this. If they win this, they're in great shape. If not, the job's in front of them. Well, somebody who isn't in great shape tonight, unfortunately for the Wildcats and their fans, is Jeff Allen, their big centre. He's the only man missing from their regular lineup, and uh, with Jeff missing, they go small fairly early. Yes, they do, and of course, their roster is pretty much intact, apart from the big seven-footer who ruptured his Achilles tendon during the week, requiring immediate surgery, and he will see no more action for this entire year. His place, of course, will be taken by Robbie Dempster, a very experienced campaigner for the Wildcats, and he'll be wearing number 24. OK, the Brisbane side has three absolute stars. After that, well, Peter Mears, it's probably cruel to say also rounds, but you really do rely on those three. They've said it all year, we've got the weakest bench in the competition, but here we are in the grand final. Looking at them, there's rookies in Breeding, Reese, Johnston and Adams. And to a lesser extent, I suppose Chris McGraw won't play much court time tonight, but they all know their roles and they play them well. OK, well, as I said, the destinies now of these two teams are in their own hands. After tonight, we go to the second game, which will be played at Burnley in Brisbane next Friday night. And then if it's needed to decide the series, the third game will be played again in Brisbane at the Burnley Entertainment Centre uh, on Sunday, Sunday afternoon. So a very important game, as John Gardner said. Our referees tonight, two of the most experienced men on the NBL, Eddie Crouch and Bill Mildenhall. We'll be back the other side of this break with all the action. Game one of the 1990 Hungry Jacks NBL final. Hi, I'm Andre Moore from the Brisbane Bullets, and after the break, I'll be mixing it up with Tiny and JC. I'll be looking forward to that. Pump up the jam, pump it up, while your feet are stumping. And coach of the Perth Wildcats. My job as coach is to substitute according to how the opposition substitutes, and also to more or less call timeout and give my team a chance to change the momentum. If I do those things correctly, my team will usually have a chance to be in a winnable position. <laughs> Welcome back now to viewers around Australia on the Seven Network and regional West Australian viewers, especially through our friends at the Golden West Network. Always in readiness now for Game 1 of the Hungry Jacks National Basketball League 1990 Grand Final Series. Let's go courtside for the starting fives. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the starting fives for tonight's game. First of all, for the Brisbane Bullets, number seven, Derek Rucker. Number 12, Greg Fox. Number 30, Leroy Loggins. Number 41, Andre Moore. And number 52, Robert Sidley. And the coach, Brian Curl. And now the starting five for the Perth Wildcats. Number five, Tiny Pinder. Number six, Mike Ellis. Number seven, James Crawford. Number ten, Trevor Torrance. Number 15, Ricky Grace. And the coach, Cal Bruton. Well, certainly some atmosphere here at the Perth Entertainment Centre. John Gardner, you've been with basketball teams for a long time now. Not putting too many grey hairs <laughs> in your head, but what sort of effect does it have on a night like this? 
Well, if you look at this situation, David, and I can speak from personal experience, having been on the bench with the Wildcats in 87, this is a game that the Wildcats want and want desperately. If you look at the Brisbane Bullets, Brian Curl has to take enormous um, encouragement from what he's done this year. He cleaned out the locker. He's had two enormously successful recruits. Everything's on the line right here. OK, we're ready for the tip-off. The big question mark is the fitness of Mike Ellis, who's been suffering from the flu. Let's go. And Tiny Pinder, who's had knee injuries. And let's see how they come up. Certainly no problem there for Tiny with the tip. And that's Mike Ellis. Skipper of the side since 1982. Bullets using a 2-3 zone effectively last week against East Side. Interesting to see if Perth press up in defence against the Bullets and try and slow their transition. First shot of the game will draw a foul, a push call for referee Andy Crouch for himself who celebrated his 300th game in the referee, refereeing department this first, year. First blood I should imagine to James Crawford who had that uncharacteristic quiet game in the Melbourne series in the final of that particular series. Andre Moore, first foul, barely a minute gone in this first quarter. So that's a good omen for the Perth Wildcats. JC's shooting touch hasn't been the greatest in the playoffs so far. Two of two. Crawford iced them both. Let's have a look at the Wildcats defense, John Gardner. They're pressing up now, trying to deny. You see the unlikely matchup of Pinder out there on Fox. I suspect they'll go back into a zone from this. Leroy Loggins, the money man, the most decorated player in the National Basketball League. The Wildcats defend successfully. Ellis, countered by Fox. Pender taken on by Sibley, double teamed with the help of Fox, which left Ellis free. Grace for three. He's never in doubt. Crawford was the taller of the two. And the Wildcats get a fresh shot clock. A good example of the size mismatch Bit of an advantage here for the Perth Wildcats. A bigger side up front. And the Bullets are going to have their work cut out on the boards. As I said in the keys to victory, Brisbane have to try and win on the boards. And James Crawford is hot at the moment. 4-0. Derek Rucker, who's been relatively quiet in games earlier this year against the Perth Wildcats. His average season score 34.6. Great reject by James Crawford. He's doing it at both ends of the court. That shot by Andre Moore. Quick transition. Ellis brings it up. Grace slows it down. Great matchup between Grace and Rucker. And Grace, the little left hand lay in. So it's all the Wildcats. A great start. 6 0. And certainly the crowd on the side of the Bullets. They will stop hearing the crowd very shortly. And they'll gain tremendous confidence when they get their first basket, but no confidence from that for a Greg Fox. Greg Fox's first foul for the game. Andre Moore with one. Let's see if we can pick it up. We've got to see whether Grace is moving. There he is, caught in the middle of the chest. Maybe a little soft, but I guess the referees are setting the tone for the game. Can I just reflect back to the first playoff game the Brisbane Bullets played against Sydney, though? They were leading 13-0, playing unbelievably well, and uh, they went and lost that game. So I won't make any comment at this stage, but it's a great start by the Wildcats. Sobering thoughts from Peter Mears. James Crawford is, well, he may be sober, but he's drunk on emotion. Six points to James Crawford out of eight scored by and the And we've Wildcats. got the first time out of the game called by Brian Cole with the score eight to zip in favour of the Wildcats. Leads eight zip, but very, very early days. Just two and a half minutes gone in this first quarter. Game one of the 1990 Grand Final Series. Best of three, Sibley. Pressure D from the Wildcats, and Sibley got through there, made room for himself. And the first score on the board for Brisbane, greeted with a deafening silence from the Perth crowd. Ellis found some room as well, should have put that away. Torrance played the trailer, but couldn't convert. Fox, almost poetic as he took the ball. Andre Moore was anything but poetic. Very uncharacteristic, Andre Moore making an early miss like that. James Crawford is yet to miss. Here's Torrance's first shot, and that'll get Moore's confidence up. A big rebound, but a bad outlet pass to Loggins that is stolen by Torrance. And so defense turned quickly into offense by the Wildcats. They are completely in control at this stage. One gets the impression, Peter, that this 8,000-strong bench is helping the Wildcats. 
Nice clear up to Kimba after a nice screen was set by Big Tiny. A great one too there with Ricky Grace and the Wildcats go even further ahead. 10-2. Brisbane need to settle down. I've mentioned it the keys to victory for Brisbane. I was talking a moment ago about their need to keep their composure and their rattles at the moment. Another turnover. As quickly it's gone the other way. Loggins, the settling influence. Here's Rucker's first shot. Banked it off the glass for two. Under a lot of pressure there. Certainly far more composed in the last uh, couple of minutes now, Brisbane, even though the score doesn't reflect that. Grace, the ball carrier for the Wildcats. He'll do an awful lot of that tonight. Pinder sets the pick. Fox gets around him. Pinder once again. Crawford creeping in on the low post. He's not there for the rebound. Loggins is. The outlet finds Rucker. Looking for a lane. Gets Torrance off his feet. Puts the shot up. A myriad of arms under there. It came to Rucker. Cleverly back to Moore. Three second call. Brian Curl applauds the effort. There's no shortage of effort. Andre Moore, the concentration. What? All across his face. First substitute for the Perth Wildcats, Eric Watterson, comes on at the off guard position. Mike Ellis sits down. He's been suffering from the flu for the past few days. This is Watterson. Guarded by Rucker. Hender came along in support. Watterson decided not to use him. Wildcats ball. Enormous opportunity here for Eric Watterson, one of the uh, long-serving players of the Wildcats. Has seen little court time since Ricky Grace came to the club this year, but in the last couple of matches has been very intense. Watterson then. Torrance, Grace baseline, guarded by Sibley. Crawford calling for the ball left, eventually gets it. Watterson puts up the three-point basket as the shot clock went down to zero. Perfect timing. Perfect answer to a 2-3 zone, which as I mentioned exactly what Brisbane did against Eastside Melbourne so successfully, but they didn't have the long-range shooters, and Eric Watterson has surprised us perhaps coming out and firing that bomb successfully. 13-4, here's Sibley, and a little tip, but I think the points will go to Robert Sibley. It was in the ring. So 13-6, but so far, it's all Perth. Ricky Grace, the drive, and the turnover goes to the bullets. Fox is tipped over a ball guard. Good help then from Robert Sibley, Peter on the baseline with that left-hand drive of Ricky Grace that he does so effectively. Some what? wonderful clashes here, Loggins. They'll attempt to shut him down with a rotation of Torrance and Davis and co. Grace and Rucker, although Fox is actually matching, matching up with Ricky Grace. Pretty ordinary pass, that one, but it's been pretty fortunately picked up by James Crawford and eventually scored by Pinder. I think there was an element of luck there, John. Just a little bit. They were both fighting for the possession of the ball. But this zone that uh, Brian Curl has put up, this 2-3 zone, seems to have settled the Brisbane players more than anything. Andre Moore's shooting percentage well below his normal at the moment. And here's a fast break. Trevor Torrance assists for Ricky Grace. Sensational ball work. I was about to come in and say what good defence Fox was playing on Grace, and I think that's probably still the case. But that really was amazing. Leroy, the fumble, almost recovered. Only as far as Crawford. Grace comes forward again. Watterson, bounce pass, finds Torrance. Quick shot. Well, on first sight, that may not have been the best option. It certainly turned out to be. 19 plays 6. It can often be Trevor Torrance's best shot, David, when he doesn't think too much and just simply takes the open opportunity. Rucker, the high ball. That's off the clock. Well, still won't go, and Pinder is there. Vacuum up another rebound. Grace has no look pass. Finds Crawford. Great body work. Has he charged? He was there. Yes, he has. That was seven. Offensive foul on James he Crawford there. here. Obviously, he doesn't agree with it. Let's see if we can pick this up, and you be the judge. Leroy's stationary. You can see the contact. Crawford's first foul, David Close, the man they call Radar, comes into the game and immediately picks up a defensive assignment. One of the most experienced men in the NBL. What an assignment. What an assignment for any rookie. at first, you would be when you stepped on the court. Although I suspect that won't last long. The adrenaline will be flowing very, very quickly. Rucker, 
teasing Watterson. He's fouled him. That's called a shooting foul. Well, John Gardner. Let's see if we can pick it up now. Rucker plays for the foul, leaves his feet, but Watterson is not allowing Rucker to jump straight up. It's an obvious foul. One of the assets of this man, Rucker, is his quickness. He's drawn so many fouls this year because of that incredible drive that he has, his foot speed and his ability to look like he's making a shot, whereas sometimes I think he's pretty lucky to get the decision. Oh, he's a great athlete, Peter. He, he must be absolutely red-hot favourite for the MVP of the NBL this year, you would imagine. I think if Andrew Gaze hadn't been injured, it might have perhaps gone the other way. It would have been a line ball, but it's November 3rd, the NBL dinner, and it will all be revealed then. I think he has so many votes up his sleeve that even the secret ones won't make any difference. Well, Rucker so far has been contained, and there's a mismatch with Tiny Pinder guarding him, but as you predicted, John Gardner, Perth are pressing up in defence and preventing the quick transition game that Brisbane like to play. I think, Peter, what they're trying to do is have the Brisbane outfit occupy more time in the backcourt. They're the Brains Trust, Dave Claxton and Brian Kill. They'd be worried. The difference is nine points. It's a blow-away first quarter. Grace doing his work on Cox. Sidley got a hand in there, but it came back to close. He still at the Wildcats. Ten seconds on the shot clock. The three-point attempt by Watto won't go, so they get a fresh clock. Grace around Fox. The right-hand lay-in. Beautiful move. Amazing. Carl Bruton once said that he could steal the hubcaps off a moving car. More. Up over the top of Crawford and Pender. He used the glass and made two. So 21 pays 12. David Close finds Pender. Oh, nice pass from Pender. Credit Pender with that basket. Great vision, John Gardner. They're yeah, certainly cutting the basket and cutting there finally. We've got a substitution being made here. Tiny Pender taking his first rest. Steve Davis coming in. Looks like he's uh, kept the beard for action there, David. The stubble might help. I think one of the keys at the moment is that Perth have nine rebounds and Brisbane only have five. Brisbane six turnovers to four. They'd be worried about that turnover count so early in the game. They had that problem when they were thrashed here by Perth earlier in the season. Loggins, a 10-foot jumper doesn't go. Crawford doing it at both ends of the court. It's all Perth. Duncan Johnston, number 11, relieving Greg Fox in the guard position, guarding Ricky Grace. Screen set by Davis. Top of the key, Davis. Baseline, James Crawford. Swish. And the crowd here loves it. Crawford. Gary Stokes, the part owner of the Wildcats, very happy with the way the team is performing. Crawford playing with great intensity. One gets the impression that he's trying to make amends for that particular feeling last week in Melbourne where people thought that he really wasn't in the ball game. Andre Moore triple teamed there. Desperately got a pass away. Defense of the Wildcats at the moment is really intense. And a foul will be called. And Derek Rucker will go to the line. 15. And 2. Hands foul on Ricky Grace. His first. Grace will go out with his first foul. You can see that hand reaching in there. There may have been contact with the ball, but there's still contact with the forearm. A lot of players really demonstrate quite strongly that they did touch the ball, but they ignore the contact that they initiated at the same time. Season average of 34.6 for Derek Rucker in the playoffs. He's down below 30. Not quite at his peak at the moment, but the defense and all the teams that he's met, a lot of really pressure on him. Down. Mike Ellis finds Crawford baseline. And Moore has called for a second foul in the first quarter. So the Wildcats certainly having the better of the first quarter as Tiny Pender comes back on court for the Perth team. James Crawford takes a rest, a well-earned rest, we might say. You wonder whether the tactic from the Wildcats is to send whoever has the ball at Andre Moore, trying to rack up some early fouls. Uh, radar close. That's how he earned his reputation. As soon as he got the ball, away it went. Three-point basket. And one of the few men in the NBL that has a license to shoot whenever he feels like it. I'm suffering from deja vu, and it's not the 87 grand final. It was the last time in regular season <laughs> these two teams played. Turnover. 
Rucker's pass, intercepted by Grace. Nellis almost loose. Well done, Pender. Knew he couldn't make the basket. Unselfishly laid it off to Steve Davis. And the Wildcats sprint to a 16-point lead, 30 to 14. Well, Brisbane have to regather themselves and try and compose themselves. That's the time that's left in the top right hand of your screen, 126. And it's Leroy Loggins who will bring the ball up court and settle it down. Duncan Johnson driving to the bucket, goes no, under and over the and draws the foul. That was 11. Billy Milton Hall indicating it was Steve Davis, number 11. Let's Good look at the action. The youngster. Look at the action under the baseline here. Nice smart move, plays for the foul, reverse layup. Steve Davis gets him on the hand. I thought Steve Davis played very well in uh, the semi final against North Melbourne. Duncan Johnson, who's only had uh, about eight minutes per game this season. He's a 70% foul shooter. He shot the two that he had the opportunity of making in the last game against Eastside, and he's done it again. Good stuff from the youngster. 32-16 to the Wildcats. One minute and counting down. First quarter. Mike Ellis, who's yet to score in the game. Good rebound by Steve Davis. Pinder goes baseline and puts it in off the glass. 32 to 16 and time for at least one more shot. Oh, Rucker. magnificent run by Rucker straight down the middle. So two more plays left in the first quarter of this game. 37 seconds on the game clock. 23 on the shot clock for the Wildcats. Each side has 30 seconds to get a shot away. Wildcats ball. The shot clock stays with 16 seconds on it. Pinder will inbound. And in fact, he steps out and leaves it for David on the Close. Shot clock, 16. Right. The player just reminded of that by referee Billy Mildenhall. Ellis. Davis. Good position baseline. That was a 10 second warning buzzer. Ellis put up a three point shot. Didn't go. Rucker comes away with the rebound. Johnston. More big slam. The Dunk oh. Master. That was pretty emphatic, wasn't it? Sure was. Two plays 20. This should be the last play. Three seconds. Two. He hasn't got time. Didn't get the shot away in time. That does not count. So that will not count. And we go into quarter time with the Perth Wildcats leading by 12, 32 to 20. Welcome back to the Perth Entertainment Centre. It's all Perth, leading 32 points to 20. At the end of the first quarter, Derek Rucker in the top 10 scorers, the leading scorer in the game so far, followed by four Perth players, James Crawford, Tiny Pinder, Ricky Grace and Trevor Torrance. Brisbane certainly shut down on the rebounding, 11 to 6, assists 6 to 1 in favour of the Wildcats. Interestingly enough, that scoreline at the first quarter okay, is identical to the last match here at the Entertainment Centre. 32 to 20 in favour of the Perth Wildcats. I thought I had deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> Perth went on to win that game, 119 to 96. Ball at the centre line. Got a back over violation here by Dad, the Bullets. You've got to pass it, not dribble it back. Pass it over. Billy Mildenhall. Billy Mildenhall explaining that you've got, you can't dribble it back. Bullets haven't settled down at the moment. They're certainly uh, not in their fluent uh, offense that we've seen in the playoffs so far, and that's because of the good defense of the Perth Wildcats. Wildcats running a three-guard rotation. David Close. It was a tip by, on, uh, by Leroy Loggins that put the shot off. Rucker a three on two. Fox the layup. Good fast break. That's typical Bullets. And welcome to our Hobart viewers through ABC stations throughout Tasmania. At the moment, the score is 32 to 22 to the Wildcats. They led 32-20 at quarter time. And here's Ricky Grace off the glass for number two. Boy, he'll take those shots on the left-hand side of the lane every night. One minute gone in the second quarter. Robert Sibley with the Brisbane Bullets. Fox outside him on the right. Goes all the way back to Rucker. They work the shot clock down. They look as if they're a little more structured in their half-court offense, Brisbane, now. They're trying to consolidate and get some half-court activity. Well, we said earlier in this game, it takes a little while to get used to the crowd. That can phase a lot of people. Sibley put it up for two, and it went. Sweet shot, 34 plays 24. 
One and a quarter minutes gone in the second quarter. So Ricky Grace, the chief ball carrier for the Perth Wildcats this season. Three guards on for Perth at the moment. Ellis, Close and Grace. Crawford goes up over the top. Hinder drags in the rebound uncontested and makes the easy two. Well, the Bullets won't be happy with that defence. No, great work by Tony Pinder. He's a player who thrives on emotion, and Robert Sidley said this week at training he was going to try and stop Pinder taking the easy shots. Well, that was a very easy shot for him. James Crawford doing the job on the boards at the other end. So is Loggins. Great work by him. Rucker goes to Sibley. Sibley works around the baseline bandit, manages to score again. He's playing his fifth grand final, believe it or not, at the age of only just 24. That's his eighth point, Robert Sibley. And looking at his performance in the playoff series, he's getting better as the series goes on. Yeah. So is this man, James Crawford, who uh, was uh, pretty quiet in the first half against North Melbourne. He showed his class and came out and finished with 18 points. Tremendous, classy player, James Crawford. Ricky Grace, who's another player who's grown in confidence all season. Goes to Ellis. A little bounce pass to Crawford. Nice play. 38 to 26 now. Maintaining that 12-point buffer. Hey, Ray. Hey, Ray. The Wildcats a little taller in formation now with Torrance on in place of David Close. But Torrance is the small forward. Both clubs persisting with man-to-man -man matchups at the moment. Ellis got the hand in on Rucker. And the body protected the ball. Oh, clever pass from Rucker to find Sibley. Baseline, two off the glass. The old give and go that those two operate so cleverly together. Sweetest move in the book. 38-28. As the Wildcats come forward once again. Marking time is Grace. The bullet's in a 2-3 zone. Moore, cleverly. Holds it up though for Sibley who leaves it behind. Rucker, who took it behind. Put it off the glass. Moore took the rebound. Nice turnaround shot. A little jump hook there. That's been the trademark for Andre Moore all season. Encouraging signs for Bullets fans as the deficit comes down under double figures again. Crawford takes Sibley on at his own game and fouls. Ooh. And I sense Brisbane are coming back. Basketball, a game of momentum. The pendulum has swung. Brisbane have had a couple of calls Just go their way. Let's watch this one again. Let's watch the left arm of James Crawford and the referees have judged that, that contact was gained unfairly by James Crawford. He doesn't agree to that, but the score sheet shows two fouls for James Crawford. 38-30, the Brisbane Bullets now with the chance to narrow that margin even further. Off the glass, Andre Moore for another two. He's coming to his art in the second quarter, and Dave Claxton getting very excited. They're grafting back, Brisbane. They're working hard at their half-court offense, and the Wildcats show their concern by calling a timeout with the scoreline 38-32 to in favor of the Perth Wildcats. Wildcats come out of their huddle. The timeout that they called. Try to regain a little of their momentum which the Bullets certainly have stolen back in this quarter. Wildcats led by 12 at quarter time. The deficit for Brisbane now is down to 6, 38-32. Davis. Pender. Ellis to work it forward again. Torrance will shoot. Three-point range, but it doesn't go. He gets his own rebound and makes the easy layup. Does it well. Bullets will be concerned about that lack of blocking out there from the side, Peter. They wouldn't be happy with the offensive boards that the Wildcats are getting. Yeah, they all stood back and watched that, and nobody blocked out. Trevor Torrance looked like the triple jumper that he once was. Very athletic. And so it's back to 42-32. Rucker's three-point attempt misses. Mike Ellis continuing to do a good job in his duel with Derek Rucker, and there he dishes off to Steve Davis unattended under the basket. That's a superb pass from Mike Ellis. The skipper has been suffering from flu all this week, but you wouldn't know it watching that. Well, I don't think the flu affects his uh, his head. If you can <laughs> say that. It might affect his breathing, but it certainly didn't affect his brain. It'll be interesting to see how long they persist with Mike Ellis on the floor. I think the game plan would have been to play him in short bursts, but he's certainly doing a manful job out there on Derek Rucker. 
Leroy Loggins of all people losing the handle on that one and that's a turnover to the Wildcats. 42-32, second quarter. Six minutes, 45 to go. Plenty of work in the paint. A long shot by Pinder doesn't go and of all people it's Fox who pulls down the rebound. Long pass from Rucker to Sibley. Great teamwork between those two. They're best of friends and flatmates. I G Sibley got out there like a racehorse right down there on the fast break. Nothing wrong with his knees. No, he's playing well. I don't think the knees are a major problem. He's got a bit of jumper's knees as probably Tony Pinder has. Here's Grace doing his stuff on Rucker. It doesn't go, but he gets another opportunity. One of the things that people underestimate when they look at Ricky Grace, he posts up extremely well close to the paint and he has some nice moves inside the keyway. That's 10 points for Ricky Grace. So Paul Rees comes on court for the Brisbane Bullets. Just spelling Andre Moore. And this is where the Wildcats will want to get in to the big men. A little high-low offense being played by the Bullets here now. Working from Sibley to Reese. Good rebound by Reese. See if you got him right in the oh. back of the head. Reese will Points get the foul. bonus as well. That was 11, the hands in the head. One to come. The voice of referee Billy Mildenhall. Let's see it once again. You heard the call. Let's see if you can pick it up now. Strong rebound by Reese. And there's the contact at the back of the head. Reese will go to the line. Reese, just 21 years of age. Signed with Brisbane ahead of Westside Melbourne and Geelong. Shooting 76% from the foul line this year. I was going to say tonight, he's probably fairly glad he signed with <laughs> Brisbane. <laughs> and he's shown very good composure in the playoffs, uh, Phyllis. For a youngster, I think he's got a big future. Got a tough assignment out there on James Crawford. Brisbane continuing to match up in man-to-man -man assignment. Torrance. Ellis. Quick pass. Almost went astray. Falcons did well to get a hand to it. Pender. Ooh. Reject from Sibley. Wildcats ball. Boy, there's intensity out there on the floor now. Everybody's on the line. Something about no quarter being given or asked, I think. Great work by Sibley. Torrance to inbound. Pender. Hand off to Ellis. Wildcats all on one side for a moment there. Nobody weak side at all. A better spread now. Fox gives Grace the time to shoot, so he does. Torrance almost got the tip in. And Logan comes away with the ball. Sibley. Great pace, great assist. Fox for two. 44 plays 39. Suddenly the gap is closed, Peter Mead. Yes, the Bullets like to play that fast-breaking game, and they've got their rhythm now. You can sense they're confident in each other. The players are running into the gap, making the open man. They're, they're moving in their offense, which is always a good sign. The Wildcats haven't let up. Still got that handy buffer, 44 to 39. They have their starting five out there at the moment, the Wildcats. The fadeaway jumper, the trademark tiny pinder shot doesn't go. And Rucker, who seems to have been shut down, but is still scoring. Fishing it away to Loggins. Change in matchup assignments there. Ricky Grace now given the job on Derek Rucker. Rucker has 10 so far. Rucker the dish to Reese, and that's just where Paul Reese likes him. Point blank. He's got the height to make it. And he's got two of two, 44 to 41. And a time. So Carl Bruton exhorting the troops. They've seen their lead whittled down from 12 to 3 over a period of seven and a half minutes. How desperately Cal must be wanting to win his first grand final. He was frustrated by Leroy Loggins in 1982 when Leroy was with West Adelaide and Cal was at Geelong. He played with Leroy in 85 and saw him win a championship and of course in 87 we know that and once again it was Leroy who led the Bullets to the championship. And Peter Leroy, even though he hasn't scored, he has two rebounds and he's picked up about four steals out there. And that's the danger sign as well. If they let Leroy loaf through this, he could well get into the game in the third quarter. Andre Moore got a fingertip to that shot and made it miss. A long outlet by Loggins goes to Fox, rejected by Grace. Once more, it was that long outlet pass by Loggins, picking up Ooh. Fox under the basket and putting all the defensive effort and pressure onto Grace. So it's 44-41, a three-pointer would tie it up, but Fox tries to drive through the keyway. <laughs> if it once flash. you don't succeed, that's the, the second. Let's see if he tries it again. I'm pleased to see Greg Fox doing that. He's showing a lot more confidence in driving now. A little unlucky there, too. Rucker on close. 
tries to use his quickness off the glass oh Ooh. lovely tip in yes what great hanging there by Andre Moore nobody at home he, as you say it helps when you've got a hand like a spade as well doesn't it close Crawford close again he'll let it go well as close as you could possibly get to going in without doing it Fox close one on one Oh dear. Rucker unlucky. <laughs> as unlucky as you can be. And Loggan says thank you very much. That's and he gives the Bullets the lead for the first time in the game. And it's Loggan's first point in the game. And that's why they call him the money man. 45 plays 44. The advantage now with the Bullets. Race. Cal Bruton, the worried man on the sidelines for the Wildcats. Race again. The 10 second buzzer has gone on the shot clock race that shot never really looked like it was going to go it was hassled all the way through and reese proving to be a valuable defender certainly has some bulk out there on the court rucker goes past close hangs in the air makes two more brisbane now lead by three 47 44 12 to 27 the score line the wildcats have only put 12 on the board this quarter the bullets 27. rucker has 12 points that's his first points of this second quarter but he's certainly doing it in other ways with his assists, some great outlet passes. Torrance, the jumper, he is good. And it's got the one point lead to Brisbane now. Substitutions being made for both sides. Pinder comes in for Torrance. Sibley and Duncan Johnson come in for Reese and Fox for the Bullets. I always wonder about this, John, when a team has a big lead like the Wildcats had. We saw the Bullets against Sydney early in the year, as I mentioned, led by 13 and saw it evaporate. What effect does it have on the morale? It's devastating because it's very hard for the coaching staff to really pull that adrenaline down and make them work at the game that he knows that will be successful. Grace goes coast to coast. Showed great speed making the lane for himself. Has a fantastic two-step. Johnston, Wildcats now going into a zone, they've got a 2-3 zone there trying to match up from that 2-3 zone, putting ultimate pressure on the man with the ball, hoping for that type of steal, it's just it, Grace, no look pass, finds Tiny Pinder, no mistake for two, and the Wildcats go to a three point lead, 50 plays 47, the crowd of 8,400 here like that a lot, Johnston, faced by Davis, hands up, Rucker, Sibley, Johnston has time to shoot, goes back to Moore, who had the position. That's his favourite spot, David, low on that left-hand box so he can turn inside, use the outside shooting hand. After losing his confidence uh, with a turnover, Duncan Johnston making a nice assist there for Andre Moore with one minute to go until half-time. 49 to the Bullets and 50 to the Wildcats. Ricky Grace playing so well. He's a completely different player from the one I saw earlier in the year at Boondall. Great matchup out there, Peter, with Grace and Rucker. Yes, they're on each other now. And Grace takes the points in that little round. He's won the battle, but will he win the war? 52 to 49 to the Wildcats. Derek Rucker not too impressed with that. He gambled on defense, played the old Matador defense, and Grace made him pay the price. So time for one last shot for the Brisbane Bullets. 20 seconds on the shot clock, but up goes the three-point attempt from Derek Rucker, and in it goes. Perfect answer. So that's given Perth the chance now. Can the Bullets keep them out and go to the break at 52 apiece? A tap on the head from Ricky Grace indicates the move. A couple of double picks set there. Off the screen he goes. Pin to the fadeaway jumper, doesn't go. Loggins throws up the prayer shot, but it won't go in. In the last time they met, the Perth Wildcats led by 52 to 35. This time, it's 52 apiece. We'll take a break. And welcome back to the Perth Entertainment Centre. We're at half time. It's all locked away at 52 points apiece. And an amazing turnaround in that second quarter. There you see it, 32 points to 20 at quarter time. Now the score in the second quarter was exactly the same, 32 points to 20, but uh, the ledgers were reversed. And so the Wildcats have seen their 12-point lead at quarter time absolutely wiped out. 
A very good effort by the Brisbane Bullets to come back and do that. And one of the men who helped lead it was Andre Moore, along with Derek Rucker, of course. But I speak of Moore because Moore is one of the best slam dunkers in the National Basketball League this season. And Andre Moore is a man who could help you to win a Mazda 323 in the Mazda slam dunk competition. Let's take a look at it now. The Mazda slam dunk competition. The slam dunk is one of the most spectacular aspects of basketball. The basketball ring which players throw the ball down through in a dunk is 10 feet in the air, making it a difficult athletic feat in general. The top seven slams of the 1990 NBL season have been selected, and you have the chance to compare your judgment with the experts and win a magnificent Mazda. In trying to judge dunks, the following elements should be considered. Degree of athleticism, hang time, that's how long in the air, power, height above the ring, and the degree of defensive opposition. Are you ready to make your choice? Well, here are the top seven Mazda slams of the year. Put them in the correct order and send your entry in before the grand final. the slam dunk competition goes like this put the top seven slams in order and send your entry to the mazda slam dunk competition post office box 7 south melbourne victoria 3205 entries must be received by october 26 the winner will be announced during the grand final telecast october 28 get your entry in for a chance to win this magnificent mazda 323 Welcome back, 52 points apiece at half time. I would say one worried man in this stadium at the moment is Calvin Bruton. He's talking to Neil Poe. Yes, thanks, David. Well, Cal, um, two contrasting quarters of basketball there. The first quarter, the Wildcats did everything right. In the second quarter, Brisbane turned the tables. Well, we let them off the hook in terms of uh, giving them easy baskets. Uh, the first half, we uh, picked up our defense in terms of denying them. Uh, we went to the board strong. We got high percentage shots in the second quarter. We um, sort of lag back getting on defense and they got opportunities on the fast break so uh, we got to take away the uncontested shots. I thought uh, Moore and Sibley uh, did a lot in that second quarter. Your, your big guys will have to do a bit more you know, for the rest of the game. Yeah, they, um, they got inside and big Paul Reese came in and he was an X-factor. He chipped it on the boards. But, uh, we know what we have to do so we'll go out and do it this half. Okay, Carl, thanks very much. Good luck in the second half. Back to you, David. Thanks very much, Neil. John Gardner with me and John. They certainly did lose the momentum. They did, and I think as Cal rightfully said there, they've got to get back on defence. The transition game by the Bullets was awesome. If you look at the stats, 52 to 59, the shooting percentage, and that's a turnaround. The Bullets were only 46% in the first quarter. By virtue of those layups, they picked it up. Rebounds, there's nothing there at all. The turnovers, even so, the Bullets are giving away more balls, but they look more settled then, David. I was just in the foul count, to only 11 fouls so far. It really sure. has been a very easy game, the referee, but the referees have done a good job. They have done a good job. There's been nothing really controversial as yet, and if we look at the, the point scorers there, Ricky Grace with 14, pinned to Crawford. Torrance has chipped in with eight, that's fine, but we really drop away, and there's not an awful lot from the backcourt there. 
Well, Mike Ellis hasn't uh, contributed to the points tally yet, and he's only been used in those short bursts so far. Do they need his on-court leadership? I think they do, and I think as the game progresses, you're going to find that Mike Ellis will be given the job more and more on Derek Rucker. Rucker has 15 already. Moore was very quiet in the first quarter, has put together 12, but let's look at Leroy Loggins. There's the money man there, two points. He will get better as the game goes on. That's a danger sign, I think, for the Wildcats. OK, so what does Brian Curl tell his charges from here? More of the same, absolutely. But no changes, more of the same. And defensively on Crawford and Pinder? Crawford went at everything early. It hasn't been successful in the second quarter. But I think in terms of this quarter, I think the Bullets have to make sure they control the backboards and look for the transition game. OK, and for Carl Bruton? Bruton's got to be concerned. His backcourt's not firing. He's, tr he's tried a couple of different uh, defences they haven't worked for him. I think he needs to go inside to Tiny Pinder. OK, one of the happier men with that second quarter is Brian Curl. He's speaking with Peter Mears. Brian Curl, after being 12 down at quarter time, you must be pleased with that second uh, quarter. Oh, yeah, I was a lot pleased. We got a little bit loose. There was a bit of uh, tenseness there and nerves, I think, in a couple of players. But uh, once we get that out of their system, we, we played how we should play. The rebounding looked especially good, 13 rebounds to their 7 in the second quarter, but a little bit of absence of blocking out by the Bullets. Yeah, we let them get a few offensive boards that we shouldn't ever let in there, but uh, we made those adjustments and hopefully this half we won't let them get so many. Bit of nerves early on, do you think? Oh yeah, that, that's for sure. Would you expect that this time, you know, for finals? That's no, uh, no different any year. Thanks, Brian. Best of luck. Thanks, Brian. OK, so there it is, 52 points apiece. An intriguing first half. I'm sure we're set for more of the same when we come back the other side of this break. And welcome back to the Perth Entertainment Centre, wherever you may be watching, through... The Seven Network across Australia, the Golden West Network in regional Western Australia and our friends in Tasmania watching through the national broadcaster, the ABC. It's 52 points apiece. Brisbane have taken to the pine again and are anxious to get on with the job. Eddie Crouch just having a chat with Leroy Loggins. The Wildcats not coming out with the same gait that they had when they started the second quarter. I think they'd be inclined to hope they would, David, but right now... It's a different ball game. You know, uh, if coaches all over the world will tell you the second half is really a new ball game right now. And the uh, Wildcats would certainly hope to emulate that first burst in the quarter. But the Bullets have got the ascendancy right now. Andre Moore had the ascendancy on the tip off. And it's Derek Rucker who puts up the first shot of the third quarter. And Crawford with the first of the defensive rebounds. Brace. Pinder, baseline, thought about letting it go. Crawford over the top of Sibley, who got his hand to it. Loggins, Pinder got it back. Well, now that was pretty ordinary. Grace. Sibley, Grace got in. Now there is no foul called. Billy Mildenhall was right behind him. That sensational D from Ricky Grace. Rather poetic there either end. What's the dive here? The desperation of a final. Grace will reach out with that left hand, trying to steal it very successfully and to do that without making contact with Sibley's arm is quite a feat and those boards are hard Ricky Grace just stretching a little bit there he's not too happy with the bang on the left thigh a graceful Woo. dive and a gutsy one saved a certain two points Fox for three doesn't go Grace the rebound this one, I feel, is going to go right down to the wire. Grace's attempt shot is rejected by Loggins. Still comes back to the Wildcats. They kick it around the perimeter. Mike Ellis, who's been suffering from the flu this week. The screen set by Pinder, but he goes across to Grace. Off the glass for two, a super shot. Nice move by Ricky Grace. 16 points for him, and what parallels there are between the right-handed Rucker and the left-handed Grace. Two superb athletes. Both Moore and Crawford on two fouls. Rucker dribbling desperately, double team, but flips it straight to Grace. And it's just as soon gone back to the Bullets, a three on two, in fact a four on two, but Rucker decides to shoot for three and <laughs> makes it. Swings and roundabouts, Peter Mears. 
One team has the ball looking for a layup. Rucker despondent after the ball was stolen for him and then had the presence of thought to find the three-point line because he had great dominance on the backboards. Grace off a pinder screen, baseline, rejected by Loggins. Foul call. Tiny Pinder. Tiny Pinder's first foul for the game, thank you very much. How unusual is that after half time? <laughs> last time Tiny only had last time Tiny had one foul in the third quarter. He hadn't played the first two. <laughs> Interesting during that last play phase that well the last two times down the floor, Leroy Loggins has got a hand and rejected Ricky Grace's shot. So it's Loggins with the ball now. More. Tiny Pender using the body on him. Good defense from Pender. Here's two. Oh, yes he does. The favoured left-hand is dunked by Ricky Grace. The denial defence. Loggins is at home. Brings it up and back to Fox. I think you'd have to put that last steal down there to Ricky Grace. Andre Moore turned and Ricky Grace reached in and got contact with the ball. Right. Dislodged it. Gee, some pretty heavy body work from Pender as well, though. Sibley, can he turn on Crawford? Yes, but not with the ball. Oh, He's travelled. That's the intimidating athleticism of James Crawford. That's good defence. Brian Curl looks on. Brian Curl aiming for his fifth title at the moment. It's in the balance, 56 to 55, in favour of the Wildcats. Grace playing superbly, dishes off to Ellis, who makes three points. A good sign from Mike Ellis, low on that baseline side. He's very reliable. First his points. first points in the game. The skipper, who's been leading this side since 1982, since they first came into the competition, out of a sick bed. Alley oop style pass from Andre Moore to Sibley, couldn't control it. So it's a couple of vital turnovers going the Wildcats' way. The pendulum swinging back to Perth. Loggins working on health defense, just, just a perpetual motion. Tiny Pinder. Tiny decides he'll shoot for two. A long way out. Big rebound from Andre Moore. It's not the shot that the Wildcats want from Tiny Pinder. His strength is in the paint, not from the three-point line. Oh, that's a long shot for Moore. That's about the Timeout. maximum Out. distance for him. And it's 59 to 57 to the Wildcats as a timeout is called. <laughs> To come back out, 59 plays 57. And the Wildcats regain some of the momentum they had during that first quarter, and they're absolutely electric. The Brisbane perhaps just a little phased at the moment. Game seems to have settled down to what you would expect in a final series now. Well, Peter Mears said just a little while ago, he sensed it was going to go right down to the wire. I think you're right. I think it was that settling down phase early on that... Uh, balanced itself out and I've just got that feeling that it's, it's blow for blow. Foul call. Tiny Pender, second foul. He uh, got his body into Greg Fox. Moving screen right in front of Billy Mildenhall. Just too obvious. There are better places to do it, aren't exactly. there? Exactly. And what a good job these officials are doing. Eddie Crouch and Billy Mildenhall. A thankless task. Eddie Crouch refereeing in his 11th final series for the NBL. That's some sort of record that will take a lot of matching. Almost a super play, but it didn't come off the alley-oop attempted by Fox and Moore. Big oh. hustle on the ground from Torrance and Sibley. And the Wildcats will be hoping ball. that that's a jump ball between Crawford and Sibley yeah. rather than Torrance and Sibley. Take a lesson here, all you youngsters out there watching for intensity. Everybody prepared to put their body on hang the on line. Hang on, Ed. 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 Sibley, a veteran, now five grand finals. Knew that he just had to go down on that one, so it's Torrance, the former Australian junior triple jump champion. Little Robert little, Sibley. Little delay here while they wipe the sweat from the floor. Not surprisingly, the athletic TT gets it. And Grace is having a super game against Rucker. Boy, there's a matchup worth the price of admission just to see these two guys going at it. Two fine recruits for the NBL this year. A few years ago, they wouldn't have recruited guards, but now they're all the rage. And here's one doing his stuff, Mike Ellis. And they're loving it on the Perth bench. Quick transition by Brisbane. Rucker going through traffic, doesn't go. Moore will find it, though, and a foul will call. It'll be a three-point play. 
two, Ricky Grace. 15, one. Well, it's been a game remarkably free of fouls, hasn't it? Well, it's certainly free of the spite that crept into the last series in Melbourne between uh, the Wildcats and the North Melbourne Club. One. There was just a little bit too much intensity there. This has been played with a good spirit. The big man from Chicago, Andre Moore, who's one of the top ten foul shooters in the land, makes it a three-point play. So Perth now leads just by one. Seven minutes and five seconds to go in this third period. Perth persisting with a double high post there, looking for Grace to go around on the screen and roll. Ellis, a long shot for two, won't go in. The tip attempted by Pinder. Eventually, it's Grace who puts up the shot. It's knocked away by Sidley and kicked back to Crawford. Ellis, the drive and Ellis, the drive and dish. Torrance can't find it, and it's a Brisbane ball. Finally, Moore comes down with the offensive board, but there were three offensive rebounds there, and that's a great dish by Sibley. Once more, finding Fox low on the left-hand side of the key. The fist pump from Robert Sibley. He's really fired up in this game, keeping his team in the hunt. Brisbane bench right up there enthusiastically encouraging their lineup. Tiny Pinder just trickles one in. 63 62. So the lead changes hands again. The Wildcats just one up. And one suspects it's going to be nip and tuck for the rest of this night. Fox for three. Fell short. Pinder couldn't get there. That's over the baseline, and a Brisbane ball. That fell so short that it surprised Tiny. A little injudicious with the selection there was Greg Fox, as he indicated that to Derek Rucker. Well, more good luck than good judgment. The Bullets got the ball back. Nonetheless, the Bullets' performance has taken some of the wind out of the sails of this crowd. Let's hear the call from referee Billy Mildenhall. Fouls 10 for a block. Trevor Torrance in your picture there. You watch the nice movement here by Fox. He withholds the shot, playing for the three-point play. They're a little unlucky, but that's a strong, bold move from Greg Fox. Two. Who is also a candidate for the rookie, uh, not the rookie of the year, the most improved player of the year, which I feel will go to Shane Hill from Geelong. So Fox, pound ice the first. Been short the on the shot. The scores. It's not Robert Sibley, it's Greg Fox. And he's been short in his last two shots. Oh, but he's locked it up, 63 apiece. Peggy Grace. Ellis in the off-guard position, just making the rotation on the baseline with close. Pender, room to shoot. Likes that range. And, and swish for two. Close. Bob Williams, one of the other owners of the Wildcats. The man who took the Wildcats basically into private ownership in the Basketball Federation. Fox, great work. Moore a little too strong on the ball. And Crawford has been fouled by Fox. Five, I think you'll find three, that Sibley's got the push. Fox in good position. Sibley coming from behind. Robert Sibley's first foul. Well, they've been very conservative with their foul count tonight, what? haven't they? It's amazing to see Robert with only one foul at this stage. Both sides very cautious tonight. But it hasn't made for a bad game. Mike Ellis. Fox in his face. Crawford gets some room away from Andre Moore and makes two. And the Wildcats take their lead to four, 67-63. Classy stuff from JC. Well, he's got 12 points for the game now. Rucker on Ellis. Dishing off to Sibley. Couldn't control it. Goes to Loggins. That shot's short. Comes down to Rucker. He can't control it. Goes to Andre Moore. It's stripped. And Grace brings it away. Ellis, good work in defence by both Loggins and Fox, but over the top, Ricky Grace. A great move by Ricky Grace, and we've got a timeout by Brian Curl with a scoreline 69 to 63 in favour of the Wildcats. And Ricky Grace has 20 points. Kim Beasley, communications minister. Mal Speed, the chairman of the NBL, sitting there with him, trying to communicate something about the greatness of this game, I would imagine. Everyone who's anyone's here, the Queensland Sheffield Shield cricket team are here somewhere in the audience, uh, ready for the FAI Cup game on Sunday. It's 69 to 63 to the Wildcats, four minutes, 37 to go, third quarter. And I get the feeling that Perth, before that timeout, had just kicked away a little bit. There's been a few problems. Paul Reese is back on again. Moore. 
No, Loggins it was going baseline, but they didn't pass to him. Fox to Moore to Reese. And again he scores. No, he doesn't score. I thought that one was going in. Ellis kicks it back to David Close. His radar shot doesn't go, though. Good outlet from Fox to Rucker, and he'll lay this one in. A charge. The points count. Now you try and pick this up on replay. Now look at this. Ricky Gray stands, holds his ground. That's a marvellous action shot of a great athlete taking a basket to the hoop. But you've got to give credit to Ricky Gray picking up the offensive foul on Rucker. But the two points count for Brisbane. So it's still a four-point buffer for the Wildcats. What a spectacle with Rucker and Grace. Peter, this is a quality game, as you would expect. We haven't seen those two go against each other as hard as this or as directly as this in the two regular season games this year. No, at Blindor, Ricky Grace fouled out reasonably early, and we never saw the best of him on that occasion. And I think the same thing happened when Rucker came over here. Yes, that's right. Rucker didn't play his best here. Pinder can't find it. Loggins working heroically on the defensive boards. Pulls down another rebound. He's not scoring, but he's certainly doing a lot of work in defense. Rucker tries to use his speed on Ellis, but dishes off to Fox, who kicks it away to Loggins. Baseline, he loves that spot on the court. That's Leroy's second basket for the match. But it's not hurting the team. The money man will be there when it really matters. And that's been characteristically his game. Oh, yes. Magnificent drive by Grace. 22 points for him. Wildcats out by four. Rick, Ricky, you've got him on the arms on the way up. That's oh, two. Third Bell's foul then for Ricky Grace. And uh, that'll be of some concern to the Wildcats. Will they leave him on, John Gardner? I think they will. Let's pick it up on replay as we go through here. You can see him reaching in. Again, it's a soft foul, but he did gain the advantage as Rucker had left the floor and committed for the shot. And to answer your question, David, I think they have to persist with him on the floor because that matchup is really developing and warming with so Rucker, Rucker and Grace. Rucker, 100% from the charity stripe. That's his fifth tonight. Average 34.6 uh, points per game in the regular season. Only 29.6 in the finals, but from the stripe, well, he's over 80 80 percent. 22 points so far tonight. Two points, the difference, 71-69. We have just under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Grace back out to Ellis. The Wildcats forced to go high-low with some great defense from Brisbane. Close, ices it for three. That's the opportunity that the Wildcats need to take. They've got Mike Ellis and Ricky Grace on the floor, great penetrating guards, and they can dish out to somebody like Grace. That's where Rucker's not getting the same support right now. He's driving and dishing, but he's not finding the open shooter. Well, good luck and good judgment for the Wildcats. They get the ball from the side, and Rucker stood motionless. Well, great vision, great assist, and the power. That was sensational. Oh, there's no big passes under the basket between Pinder and Reese. We've got a substitution being made. Reese comes out, Sibley comes in. I think that's a good move from Brian Curl. Yes, Paul Reese was just a little upset there. He and Rucker both stood and argued with the official while that transition game was running, and that's hurt the bullets. And it's allowed the most emotional player on the court, Tiny Pinder, to lift his team with one hand, the one that he jammed the ball in the net. So Pinder makes the three-point play, 77 plays, 69, and the Bullets will want to reel in that eight-point deficit as quickly as they can. Yes, uh, some emotional play, some foolish play by Brisbane. Now Sibley's back there on the court, and I expect him to lead the team as he's been doing so well, but he's missed on that occasion. And Peter Mears, it was so obvious, the thing you pointed out recently about in that last play phase with Tiny Pender. He's come down and dragged in that huge defensive rebound, and his eyes are ablaze, and he's ready to play. Ellis, top of the key for three. Doesn't go. Soaring up was Robert Sibley. And of course, that's the danger with Tiny. The adrenaline has pumped just a little bit too hard, and he now has his third foul. One and, one. and I think my memory serves me correctly. That's three in this quarter. Yes, so he's on three. Ricky Grace is on three. Of course, five fouls and you're out. 77 to 69. I guess 
more uh, opportunity, David. Will Bruton leave Tiny Pinder there with three fouls? Will he save him for the last quarter? Would you leave him there with three fouls? I'd be inclined to take him out right now and replace him with Steve, Steve Davis. Davis. Yep, I think Steve Davis is the man the Wildcats can go to in that situation with some confidence. He really has been a quiet achiever, Steve Davis. Yes, I, I think he's a player of great intensity and experience. There's 14 points for Sibley now. The difference is still six for the Wildcats. Grace dishes and lays it in off the glass with the greatest of ease. Of course, this used his right hand dribble to great effect. He showed some weakness on that hand last weekend in Melbourne during the semi-final, but not tonight. So it's the bullet's turn. Oh, it's a walk. Travel. Pity for Rutger. No points. So good defense from Mike Ellis. He's got the ball. Now it's Grace. Man to man. Defense by the bullets. Ellis goes all the way himself. The points count. And the foul will be called on Rucker. And the Cats love it. Ten point spread. Mike Ellis goes low on the baseline. Left hand. You can see Rucker reaching in there. That gives the Wildcats a ten point spread. And we're in the last minute of the third One. quarter. Now this is where it becomes incredibly tough for the visiting team. This is where you start to hear that audience again. Yes, this, this audience can become a factor. And I'm speaking sure the Wildcats, the Wildcats will be aware of that next weekend. I was going to say, speaking of audiences, if you're listening in Brisbane and you're watching this telecast, it's standing room only for next Friday's game. If you want tickets, it's standing room only. There will be at least 12,500 people there. And for Sunday's game, it'll be played at 2 o'clock if needed. So you can still get tickets for that game if it's needed. 2 o'clock Eastern time. Check your local guides. That will be a live telecast if needed in Perth. Let's pick this up on replay. Now, watch the experience of Loggins. He throws the pump fake, moves in, playing for the foul. Really threw up the hope with a prayer. So, the, the game's most decorated player in Australia. Only four points for this game, but he's scored more points in this competition than anyone. A very, very cool customer. Harking back to what you said about the uh, situation with tickets at Boondall. Bear in mind that uh, the best seat in the house, of course, is the one you're sitting watching one. now. Exactly. And the game will be shown live, I take it, here in Perth as well as in Brisbane. Most certainly. It's a two o'clock game in Brisbane, midday live throughout Western Australia. Last half minute of the third quarter, 82 plays 73, the Wildcats by nine. 16 on the shot clock, 21 on the game clock, so that five-second differential. Clever pass, jammed by Pinder. Credit James Crawford with the basket. Poor defence from Andre Moore. He gave up the baseline for Tiny Pinder. Simply, oh! oh Crawford got up so high, and we've got a goal-tending oh, call. Uh, it hit the board. It had hit the board, so it's on its way down. What a shame, what a super Grace. play. Pinder... No time to get the shot away. That does not count. And so at three-quarter time, the Wildcats lead by nine. 84 plays 75. And welcome back to the Perth Entertainment Centre. The championship quarter about to come up. The Wildcats scored 32 points in the first quarter, only 20 in the second, but have scored 32 again in the third quarter and lead 84-75, so Brisbane slowed down a little. Yes, Brisbane coincidentally scored 32 in the second quarter where they were dominant. I think the key for them was their rebounding improved so much. The top 10 scorers there. Ricky Grace has 24, Derek Rucker 22, Tiny Pinder 19, Andre Moore 17, Robert Sibley 16, James Crawford 12, Ellis and Torrance 8, Fox 7 and close 6. I was going to say, have a look at those. Grace and Rucker, Moore and Pinder, Nip and Sibley Duff. and Crawford. Mm -hmm. One of the big factors there in that quarter was the turnover rate for the Bullets. They had seven turnovers in that quarter. Ten at half time, have 17 for the game. The Wildcats have now nine turnovers. Everything else is just about line ball. 
but the turnover rate really hurt the bullets in that deal. If we can turn a player to our attention immediately, not to the bench, to us, so that we can then sort it out. A little altercation there, not necessarily an altercation. What Billy Mildenhall is saying is that Prees bring it to the attention of the game officials, not necessarily the bench. This is the man who turned the game around in that third quarter, Tiny Pinder, with a couple of monstrous jams and some great defensive play. And it's a nine-point game for them at the moment. Pinder gets his own rebound and puts the shot in. He's the man who's determined to take this game by the scruff of the neck. Well, he's the key to this match right now is Pinder. That's 21 points for Tiny Pinder. Just a point of clarification for people who may have heard us talking about the deciding game in Brisbane, if it's required. Of course, Daylight Saving starts next weekend, so while it's 2 o'clock East Coast, it will be 11 a.m. Western Australian time. If it's needed. That's right. If it's 2-zip, uh, we don't have a third game. But here's the Wildcats on the move again. 86-75. to 75. The lead is now 11. The biggest lead since the first quarter. Mickey Grace, who I feel has just edged slightly ahead of Derek Rucker in this game. Crawford, the jumper, won't go. Crowded keyway, but Grace somehow gets in there with all those monstrous men around him and gets the rebound and scores. Nice, comfortable cushion here for the Wildcats. 26 points at 61% for Ricky Grace. Rucker dishes instead of shooting and it's an air ball from Greg Cross. Wildcats are doing an excellent job on Rucker. He's being double teamed every time he puts the ball to the floor. That's the man to go to at the moment, Tiny Pinder, but it won't go in this time. Not a good shot selection. Fox on the left, got a layup over James Crawford, thank you. Well, maybe under James Crawford. Shades of Ricky Skenderis <laughs> against Tiny Pender. Super play from Greg Fox, who does possess a terrific spring, but still the lead 11 points for the Wildcats. He's also got a great turn of pace, Greg he Fox. Has. And he's, he's got, got a great outside very... shot when he gets his confidence going. Screen and roll move. Ricky Grace going baseline. The foul is called. Ruck has been caught again that on that baseline drive. You watch the laziness of Rucker here. He tries to get from behind. Rucker's third foul. Two. So he and Grace going hammer and tongs. Ricky Grace on the foul line now. He's had a 73% conversion rate from the foul line throughout the year. Both he and Rucker have three fouls. from Dallas, Texas. And he makes none of two. So it's 88 and 77. Fox once again. Loggins, the man who can change the game out of his own hands. As can that man. Fox thought about the three. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Moore puts it up. Gee, he doesn't mind that range either, does he? He likes, uh, he's never made a three-pointer yet. I bet he'd love to make one, but he likes shooting from out there. Be a good time to make one. 88 plays 79. The Wildcats still out by nine. They have nine and a half minutes left in this game. Crawford goes baseline. Sibley just had his foot on the baseline. Gave himself away with that little jump. <laughs> Looked like he was standing on hot coal. <laughs> Trevor Torrance comes in for David Close. That's a rotation that Carl Bruton has used very well tonight. I think Trevor Torrance could have an impact here. Late in the game, he tends to have fresh legs and he's able to get through very, very quickly. Add a little more pressure to the defence on trying to stop the transition game. Ellis goes up over oh. the top of Rucker with a real air ball. Well, perhaps it was a pass. Uh, well, we call it an attempted alley-oop. An attempted assist. I know what Mike Ellis would call it. He'll put it down as an assist. Will Rucker try the same? We doubt it. Sibley, baseline, almost warp. Fox dishes out cleverly to Rucker. I don't know how he knew he was there, but it was a great pass. All to no avail, though. Pender outside, Crawford inside, over the top, off the glass, and back to Loggins. And back we go again. Seesawing, Rucker takes on Torrance, and makes two off the glass. Nice clean drive. Tiny Pender with space at the back. Ricky Grace decides not to push the ball down to the floor. Sitting on this nine-point cushion, but there's an awfully long time to go on this game. The scoreboard here is 
located directly above the centre of the court. That's why Derek Rucker was looking directly up above him to see how the score was going. It's a nine-point game, and he's got three fouls next to his, game, his name. Ellis, the give and go for Trevor Torrance. And the foul is called. Four, one, the point. Andre Moore's two. third foul. He picked up two early in the first quarter. Moore going off for a rest here. You can see he came in late. Paul Reese will spend a couple of minutes on the floor. I suspect that they will try and settle Andre Moore down. He's been caught a couple of times with people going on the baseline. Trevor Torrance now on the foul line. Torrance has been 73% successful from the foul line, identical with that of the Wildcat as a team. Well, a pretty awkward-looking shot, but it's successful. He toured the United States with the Boomers last year, Trevor Torrance. Hasn't been a regular starter this year, but uh, certainly has an impact. 92-81. I think his mental attitude to the game has been boosted this year by being made a co-vice captain of the side. Something John Gardner may care to comment on. Well, I don't think it really matters that much at this level. There's a captain that needs to find something right now, Leroy Loggins. No points. Came up empty-handed. Wasn't a good shot from Loggins. Didn't have that familiar arc that we normally see. He's had a quiet game, and uh, if you look at his scoring, only six points is well below his season average. Grace over the top of Reese, posting up brilliantly, wheeling to the inside. 30 points for Ricky Grace. Well, there goes Reese at Pender again. You don't get much closer than that to the action, folks. I uh, like this young man's uh, his like hustle and purpose and uh, some intensity. Look at this. Well, as these two guys fight for it, we've got a timeout with the scoreline 94 to 81 in favour of the Wildcats. In the first game of a best of three That's grand right. final series, the Wildcats lead it by 13, 94 to 81. Jump ball between two I guys who are seeing a lot of each other in this game. Instructions from Eddie Crouch. Bill okay? Milden Hall shipping in with a little coaching. Tiny Pinder gets the tip. Bill Milden Hall gets Tiny Pinder. So I feel this game is slipping away from the bullets. 13 point lead. The Wildcats seeming to get stronger and playing with a lot of emotion and confidence at the moment. Well, we get John Gardner to comment in a minute on just at what stage Brian Curl adopts a radical change of tactic and tries something different. Grace, though, fighting for it, loses the ball. John? I think you could find it happening very Suck soon you. with Andre Moore coming into the game. Reese has done an excellent job. I suspect they will need to go inside to Moore. Their outside game hasn't worked, and actually they've scored something like 15 from the foul line out of their total of 81. Their outside game has not been successful if you take that off their total. Only two three-pointers for the game from Brisbane. Four per. Rebounds 34 to 30 in favour of the Wildcats. So not a lot in that, but they are doing a lot more with their rebounds. They've lost the transition game, Brisbane, that served them so successfully in the second quarter. Grace and Ellis combining at the top. Shot clock comes down past the 10-second buzzer. An underhanded dish off from Davis finds Pender two more. 96 plays 83. Tiny Pender, a personal tally of 23 so far. Fox forced to shoot from out wide. That's all net. Keeps Brisbane in touch, but it's still a double-digit deficit of 11 points. 85 trails, 96. 5.48's a long time to go. We've got an offensive foul here being called. Steve Davis. I suspect that's the result of the last altercation under the defensive boards for Steve Davis. It may well have been a payback. Oh, Steve Davis comes out of the game, and Crawford comes back in. Loggins, as the crowd falls hushed, waiting for the next play. Fox 
fast hands more gee he does that well he doesn't do it well enough i'm sorry not well enough he hasn't done it enough times tonight for the bullets they need to go inside to andre Moore. that's where his strength lies tiny pinder playing it like a guard and makes two superb play by pinder he's my mvp at the moment in this game seven rebounds and 25 points and i feel not only andre Moore, but leroy loggins has got to get into this game more as fox makes another turnover and it's pinder who picks up the shot five minutes left we get the impression out there peter that the wrong people are taking the shots for the bullets mike ellis has done a great job out there coming back from uh, illness and there's that man making an uncharacteristic miss, uh, miss ricky grace so let's see if the bullets can score this trip up the court they've got to find it in the next four minutes peter they need to put it together now first transition work in defense has been sensational you sense a little more urgency about the bullets game fox's shooting has really gone astray Crawford, the bounce pass into Ellis, rejected by Andre Moore, but there was a hand in there, and that's Moore's fourth foul. That's a danger sign for the Bullets. Andre Moore with four. Rather a desperation effort here. He's coming off to help, leaving James Crawford. Late in the game, didn't have the extra legs to get up without the contact, and all those years of experience of Mike Ellis made sure the contact was there. What else could Andre Moore do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And if Ellis only gets one of these two, then he's done his job. Moore's done his job. Let's hope he can stay in the game to see it through. I think if Andre was to leave the floor, the Bullets would be in deep trouble. Yes, he's only fouled out once this season that I can recall. Against the Gold Coast, he was ejected from the game for dissent. <laughs> but he's normally pretty easy going. David Close coming in to replace Mike Ellis, and by gee, he's done a great job, Mike Ellis. So Fox it is. Rucker lets the shot go early. Gee, that's a nice three-point basket. David Close was cleaned up on two screens there trying to get to Rucker. I watched Rucker at training this afternoon, and uh, he shot around the perimeter about 80% from the three-point line, but it's only his second tonight. Look at the defense from Brisbane. Crawford goes over the top. Oh, makes two. That is a clutch basket. That and really is. Andre Moore's defense had his hands down. They can't let anybody from the Wildcats take those uncontested shots. Cut up for the Wildcats. 101 to 90, and that breaks the heart of a team. Loggins is Grace. And Loggins comes away with the ball. Sibley will go over the top of Crawford. Goes baseline where he enjoys it most. Makes the layup. And the Wildcats come forward once again. And they bring up their 100, 101 to 92. And if the Bullets want to win this game, they've got to start playing now. But they call a timeout. Three minutes, 21 to go. It's a Perth uh, timeout has been called. And at this moment, it's a nine-point lead to the Wildcats. Back to Paul Britton, very confident and very composed by comparison. Brian Curl, pretty emotional in that time out. Mind you, interestingly, Brian Curl isn't after him to take the urgency shot. He's quite happy for him to pass it around. So, full customer. Interestingly enough, neither team has got into the team foul situation tonight. They've been very conservative on defense. And what uh, Brian may be looking for is to stop the clock by making sure that the Wildcats have to play a little more defense and foul the shooter. Still by the Bullets. Sibley to Rucker. Rucker has it swatted away by Ellis. Great defense, but Rucker gets it back again. It goes to Close. Close will go all the way under a lot of defense. And that was a final two points. The entertainment center's going berserk. By G, they put Derek Rucker under an enormous amount of pressure tonight. Every time he turns around, it's Mike Ellis or Ricky Grace snapping at him. And there's a, an absolute example of that as Grace picks up the pass from Ellis and puts the two on the floor. But Rucker is not Rucker happy. is furious, yes. He thought that was a foul by Ellis. Uh, I must say I agree with him. Thought the hand reached in and hit the arm, not the ball, but still. Well, it really is desperation time for the Brisbane Bullets now. Fox makes two very cool. 
They're not out of the game. Stranger oh. things have happened. Long time to go yet, but they've got to find something, and that's not it. Well, oh. that was made to look a lot more difficult than it should have been. Sibley, in came the hand from there, Ricky Grace, and that's foul four. Ricky Grace's fourth foul. Oh, and words between Sibley and Pinder. Uh, under two oh, minutes remaining. See Grace on the elbow. If the Bullets lose this game, it won't be the fault of Robert Sibley. Uh, Sibley's given 100%. 18 points. Only three rebounds, which is probably a little low for him. But his intensity is obvious to everyone. I think you've got to give a lot of credit to the Wildcats' commitment on defence here tonight. Brisbane have only been allowed to play as well as the Wildcats will let them. Well, that was, that was really... Fairly sloppy by the Wildcats. Well, it's a fundamental area. You never pass the ball in from directly under the basket because what happens is when you try to pass long, you hit the backboard. So, so the Bullets have forced the Wildcats to turn it over or surrender it. Fox steps in for two rather than three. Same range again. Now, look at the intensity of the pressure from the Brisbane Bullets. The Wildcats break it. In came the hand from Fox. Pender's quite prepared to work the clock down on every play, as the Wildcats should now. Crawford. Seven points out. Crawford isolated. Will he take the one-on-one? -on -one? No, he pushes it out. Yes, Rucker has gone down in the paint. Turley's calling for a foul. Through goes Grace. Pender banks it off the glass and makes two. Tony Pender is happy. The home crowd is ecstatic. 107 plays 98. So Big nine field. points again, the Wildcats. Tiny Pender gets a bonus shot. Sibley comes up with the foul. It's his third. Well, the semaphore is only showing two. Pinder has 27 points and 14 rebounds. And Brisbane are in the team foul situation as well. Perth have never won a game in a grand final series. This is their first chance. And they look like doing it with one minute, 19 seconds to go in a 10-point lead. Andre Moore has been shut down to some extent tonight. Goes all the way like a guard. It's come back to Rucker. Got to shoot it. Fox has got the hot hand at the moment. He's made another three, that was. So he's scored seven points in the last couple of trips down the court. Making the last three shots for the Bullets. 108 to 101. It's a seven-point game as a foul is called. Fox is 12 on the arm. But uh, one and one. It's a professional foul here. Fox reaching in. One and one. That'll put Mike Ellis on the foul line for a one-on-one -on -one situation. And Mike Ellis led the NBL this year from that particular position. 88% from the foul line. What a heroic performance by a guy who's been bedridden with the flu for the last few days. Really well, enjoy that. Good. Top cat indeed. Captain's role. The only survivor from the 82 team in their inaugural year of the NBL for the Wildcats. Well, in fact, the Wildcats have been an Ellis family tradition, hasn't it? The bench like it, so Fox carries it forward. Possibly only two plays left in this game. Well, I suspect Brisbane will want to get the shot away fairly early. More clever pass from Loggins. And a big slam dunk once again. A rather frustrated Andre Moore, I sense. Let's have a go and delay listen to what's happening. It's a team One delay, delay warning. So, not something we hear very often. Now, look at the pressure. Full court. Bounce pass finds close, who is hassled. Pender gets it out again. He needs someone to get the ball to. Well, it was almost touchdown pass material, and the Wildcats have turned it over. 37 seconds left. Again, Brisbane need to get the score up fairly quickly. They're seven points down. But a couple of three-point baskets will change that. Crawford got up well on Loggins. That could be the one that seals the match. Loggins has fouled Crawford. That could do it. Which he had to do. Well, professional foul. All was gone. See him reaching in there. He has to stop the clock. I'm a little surprised. I mean, that was the, an ideal result from the Wildcats' point of view, but there was no need for them to be so desperate in defence. They could have allowed Brisbane to take the shot. Yeah, I'm not going to say it's going to happen, but I recall earlier this season the Gold Coast led North Melbourne by five with 28 seconds to play, oh, yeah. and uh, they lost the game. 
There's a long time to go in a basketball game, 27 seconds with a, a clock that will stop on the whistle. 111 plays 103. Crawford makes the lead nine once again. So the Wildcats get back. Close, takes Fox. Rucker, Ellis went with the hand. Sibley can't put it away. Wait for the fouls. Well, still no foul. And so Grace takes his time. Ten seconds. Say goodnight. Loggins gets the steal off Crawford. Puts it up for the biggest three you'll see all night. Oh, and yes. makes it. That was sensational. Down goes the clock. And the Wildcats have won their first ever grand final game. 112 to 106. Let's just soak up this atmosphere for a minute. Well, the Wildcats are happy, but nobody is ecstatic. In the crowd they are. The Wildcats, they realise they still have a lot more to do. And a two-game prospect at Burndall is pretty daunting. I'm sure they're savouring the fact that they've been able to turn the tables on the 87 result, but they realise the job's still in front. There's a very enthusiastic crowd in Brisbane waiting for them to return the favour that this uh, enthusiastic crowd has given for the Brisbane Bullets and the Cal. You know what? They're coming out to press it, and they're going to throw everything at us. And our whole team is going to be ready for it, man. Yeah, we're going to be ready for it, baby. Hey, good effort, man. Enjoy it for the moment. Congratulations to Plow, because it's the last time we played in front of him this year. Let's bring it all home now, man. Yeah. And he's dead yeah. right. It's the last time this crowd sees their team this season. So, two of the heroes of the game. I don't think the Wildcats really had a passenger tonight, John Gardner. No, I don't think they did. They were led heroically by Mike Ellis. Tiny Pinder, Pinder found the adrenaline at the right time, but you can't go past Ricky Grace. He really put the icing on the cake. Mike Ellis goes to his mum. Or so was it? I assume, John, you pick uh, Ricky Grace as your MVP for the game, do you? I would think that Ricky Grace would take a lot of beating in that particular category. And we saw two great ball players out there with Rucker and Grace. But I think Grace was on the top. Well, I think Grace just narrowly shades out Tiny Pinder. Robert Sibley not far behind him. We'll take a break and come back and wrap this up the other side of these messages. Welcome back across Australia to the Entertainment Centre. The Wildcats have been victorious. Courtside is Neil Poe and with him, Ricky Grace and Cal Bruton. Neil? Yes, thanks, David. Well, first of all, Cal Bruton, a bit of a nervous start there, but otherwise three quarters of very good championship basketball and uh, one up in the, in the best of three series. Yeah, it was a great game and uh, all the credit to Brisbane. You know, they hung in there right to the end and uh, our guys came through when we needed it most. So um, we're looking forward to the next one and um, you know, it's going to be a big one. OK, well, uh, the gentleman standing next to you, Ricky Grace, put in a real good game and uh, against one of the game's uh, superstars, Derek Rucker, you must be very proud of him. Well, as I said all along, you know, Ricky is uh, one of the best guys in the country and he was trying to make a statement that he is the best. And uh, what I like most about Ricky is that he does it on both ends of the floor, as you saw tonight. He rebounds, he passes the ball, he scores. So uh, I'm just happy that uh, I don't have to chase him around. Ricky, uh, congratulations on your game. Um, how did that feel? felt good um, you know we just it was a total team effort um, everybody played good defense everybody played good offense we got a little raggedy there towards the end but uh, so we're pretty sure they'll probably be pressing this next game throwing everything at us like North Melbourne threw everything at us that second game uh, we hope uh, hopefully we'll be a little better prepared this time though well there's a lot of, been a lot of talk during the week about the matchup between Ricky Grace and Derek Rucker uh, I think it'd be fair to say that you come out on top tonight uh, you, you must be very pleased with that yeah, I'm pleased. Uh, I feel like I came out on top because we won. Uh, if they would have won, he came out on top. We got one, we got two, one, maybe two more games in Brisbane. Uh, I'm just going, you know, just just keep playing. And really, it's not Derek Rucker versus Ricky Grace. I've been saying all along, it's Perth Wildcats versus Brisbane Bullets, and the Wildcats won tonight. Okay, uh, Cal, just back to you briefly. Uh, any special plans this week, or is it business as usual? Well, we have to rest up. You know, we've been through a tired series, uh, North Melbourne. Melbourne Tigers, North Melbourne, and, and now the Brisbane Bullets. And uh, our guys are a bit tired, as you saw during the week. Uh, we had injuries, uh, fatigue, so we'll take the weekend off. Monday, we'll have a light run, very light, and 
we'll try to build up for the next showdown on Friday in, in Brisbane. OK, gentlemen, thanks very much. Congratulations. David, back to you. Thanks very much, Neil. Yes, indeed, congratulations to the Perth Wildcats. But, of course, there are two sides to every ledger. The other side of the ledger is the Brisbane Bolts, and talking with Brian Curl is our Peter Mears. Peter? Brian Curl, I know you're disappointed. Uh, it's just six points. Obviously, with the home court advantage, did you expect that you might possibly lose this first game? Never, never think I'm going to lose any game at all. And I thought tonight... Uh, we lost it probably in that third quarter. We let them off to a good start in the third quarter. We had eight turnovers, and, and we just let them do what they liked offensively, and, uh, and we didn't just stick to our defense of what we wanted to do on defense. And you know, I just thought we had just you know a few players down, and uh, and they had uh, you know Grace Pinder and Crawford. Uh, they played very well out there, and so did Mike Ellis. So you know, we can make some adjustments, and uh, you know, six points. It's not all lost yet. Two games back at home in Brisbane. Will that be a big factor with a capacity crowd? Do you think? It'll help, that's for sure. But, you know, we don't rely on crowds to win games for us. Although tonight uh, wasn't a crowd that lost the game for us. We just lost it ourselves out there. We, uh, you know, can't take any away from Perth. They played very well. The defensive intensity was really something to see, wasn't it? Yeah, they got after us and, uh, you know, things like that. A couple of times the ball probably went their way. And, you know, we'd, uh, but you've got to make your own breaks anyway, and uh, we just didn't do that tonight. Is it something about playing in Perth? Because last time you came over here, you played badly. Yeah, but we beat them over here before, so it doesn't really worry me. You know? I, don't, I don't care where we play or who we play. I never use that as an excuse. One good thing to come out of the Bullets game tonight, Greg Fox, 20 points. I think that's a career best. Yeah, you know, got a lot there towards the end. When, uh, but I'd need Foxy doing that all through the game and creating things. You know, he went through a pass there he couldn't hit a basket. So, you know, we, we just need him to score more and uh, more often put some pressure on their defence. Well, you were down, lost the first game to Sydney and came back and won it. Can you win this? Yeah, I wouldn't be playing anything on Sunday for the people back home in Brisbane. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, man. Thanks very much to Peter Mears and Brian Curl, a real gentleman in every sense of the word, Curly, until you have to play against him, John. Well, he's a winner, and it takes a lot of character and a lot of courage to come out and, uh, and talk to the media after a, a loss like that. It, interesting, if we look at the quarters here now, fairly even all the way through and a couple of comparisons that we could make. One of the interesting things is in the total of the uh, tape at the bottom there, the Wildcats about their season average at 112, but Brisbane well under it. 32 point first quarter, 32 point third quarter and 32 point final quarter for the Wildcats. They're yep. consistent, if yep. nothing else. Top scorers dominated by Ricky Grace tonight with 32 points. It really was an MVP effort and Tiny Pinder, as I said in the commentary, only just shaded by Ricky Grace. Yes. 28 big points from Tiny Pinder. He put them together very, very well. He only had 10 at half time. Andre Moore, 23, a little disappointed, I should imagine. Uh, Greg Fox with probably a career best, as you heard Peter Mears uh, discuss. Sibley did his job at 20. OK, Leroy Loggins kept to uh, a very low score, but I have a funny feeling he's going to bounce back in Brisbane. Well, I think he has to bounce back in Brisbane, and I think they need him to do well. And uh, if we look at uh, the game in total, I imagine that the statistics are pretty much even all the way through, except the vital one of turnovers, 23 to 15. 23 vital turnovers there that the Brisbane team came up with. That hurt them badly. OK, so uh, all in all, a fairly even game. I think Brian Curl summed it up. Perth just got away in the third quarter. Not a happy-looking Brisbane change room, but they will be pumped up and ready to go when these two sides meet again. And you'll see lots and lots of action, including more slam dunks. Let's just recap tonight's slam dunks. Johnston. Oh, big slam. There's two. Oh, yes, he does. And Ruckus stood motionless. Well, great vision, great assist, and the power. 16 on the shot clock, 21 on the game clock, so that five-second differential. Clever pass, jammed by Pinder. Credit change. So there we are, the Perth Wildcats winning the first game, 112 to 106 after it was nip and tuck, 52 all at half time. Next Friday night at Boondall, Brisbane versus Perth, game two, and if it's needed, at Burnley on Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning, Perth time, but please do check your local guides for details. And Peter Mears, uh, a big effort from Brisbane on Friday night, very quickly. Well, we'll have a fat lady there on Sunday, that's for sure, and she'll <laughs> sing loud, but uh, I'm still going to say the guys can pull it out. I saw them lose to Sydney in the first game. It's very hard winning away from home, especially here in Perth. Well done. Congratulations to the Wildcats. OK, and don't forget all sports fans, of course, the Sports World program on 7 on Sunday morning. Thanks for your company tonight. On behalf of Neil Poe, John Gardner and Peter Mears and the crew, this is David Christensen wishing you a very good night.